you're, legally speaking, there was no election fraud or no election corruption. Do you, no. do you, well, let's put it this way. Do you agree that 61 different federal and state courts, including eight judges that Donald Trump appointed himself to the federal bench, have rejected every claim of electoral well, I, corruption I just, or fraud I, that have been I, yeah. advanced? Do you I, agree with that? I, I don't. And the reason is those claims are not evaluated because in many of the circumstances you reference, jurisdiction was the principal question. So I think it requires a review of the procedure. Do you have process. any case authority in the land of those 61 cases or any other cases where a court has determined that there was electoral corruption or electoral fraud that materially uh, affected the outcome no. of the election in any state in the no, union? No court. Do you have which, one? Which I believe is a real failure of the judiciary. I think our, the Article Three courts failed our country by not exercising more jurisdiction over those questions. Now, there's a difference in whether or not fraud existed and whether or not there's an adequate remedy. And I think also a number of those cases were kicked on remedies. Well, no court has said that fraud existed, it. and so there's no I, remedy because there's no violation, well, right, Mr. Right, Gates. Right, but you can't. There's no violation. There's no fraud. Decided that there was okay. no fraud if they didn't take up the question to review the facts okay. on jurisdiction or the, remedy. You know what? That might work on Steve Bannon's podcast, but that's not going to work in the Rules Committee feel, of the United like States House of Representatives. Here. I'm sorry, Mr. Gates, forgive me. I, I've got some serious questions to ask you. The chairman of the January 6th Committee, Chairman Thompson, and John Katko, who was the emissary of Kevin McCarthy, negotiated an agreement for an independent outside commission with five Democrats, five Republicans, equal subpoena power right down the middle. And yet Donald Trump decided he didn't like it because he doesn't want anybody investigating January the 6th. So he turned against it, and then the Republican leadership flipped over and turned against it. I think you voted against that commission. Why did you vote against that commission? For many of the reasons that I've discussed today, that the focus on January 6th, the absurdity so you don't want to know. is unwarranted. You don't well, want to I, know look, anymore. I think we have, okay, a, let me ask you about that. we have a process in Article 3 where the courts get to determine those issues. If the United States government brings charges, people can resolve those in the courts. You don't want to know. That's not okay with you guys because you want to politicize Gates, it. Okay. Because you I know you too well for this. You don't want to know the answer. Let's say that the exact same attack had taken place. Let's assume... 145 of our officers were beaten in the face with baseball bats, steel pipes, Confederate battle flags, et cetera. Let's say they interrupted the counting of electoral college votes for the first time in American history for four or five hours. Let's say marauders and insurrectionists came into our building and chanted for hanging Vice President Mike Pence. But let's just change the hypothetical. This one element, Mr. Gates, Let's say it wasn't the Proud Boys. Let's say it wasn't the Oath Keepers. Let's say it wasn't the Three Percenters. Let's say it wasn't the Aryan Nations. Let's say it was Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Would you really not want an investigation into what happened with that attack on America? If Al-Qaeda or ISIS attacked the US Capitol, I would think that the least capable institution to bring them to justice would be this January 6th committee. You would not want... I would far prefer the legal process to play out or the military process to play out. If the American people had to rely on the Congress itself as an institution to protect us from ISIS without law enforcement, without the military, yeah. we would be in deep, deep trouble. Okay, is that a new position for you and Mr. Jordan? Because I know you guys well, it's have a new been hypothetical. involved... Yeah, you've been involved in a lot of different investigations, both of you. For example, does Benghazi ring a bell? Not for nothing, but if you think that you're gonna outdo Jamie Raskin, a professor of constitutional law, on the issue of constitutional law, then that pretty much speaks volumes about where you're at on the whole judgment front. Now, Raskin asks Gates to acknowledge the objective reality that while Republicans wail about there being fraud in the 2020 election, that when it came time to actually litigate that fraud in the courts, that every single judge in 61 cases, including ones who were appointed by Donald Trump himself, rejected those claims of fraud. And Gates can't even do that claiming that, in fact, jurisdiction was the principal question, and so those cases were ruled on procedural grounds and not on the merits. But of course, that's a lie. Because first of all, of the more than 60 cases, roughly two dozen of them were decided on the merits. And yet still, the Trump team won only one, shortening a cure deadline in Pennsylvania from nine to six days, which had zero impact on the outcome of the race in that state. They lost every other case where they were decided expressly on the merits. And second of all, simply focusing on the number of cases argued and on procedural grounds versus the merits is misleading, considering that just because a case is dismissed on procedural grounds doesn't mean it wasn't duly considered. 
Justin Levitt, a constitutional law professor at Loyola Marymount University, said, quote, the procedural dismissals aren't all small things. Some of them are bad lawyering, but some of them are dismissals because Trump supporters tried to challenge laws well over a year after they were passed, well after ballots had gone out to eligible voters who had the right to rely on the fact that the ballots they were receiving were lawful, and well after the election was over. In other words, Gates and the rest of Trump's stooges can pretend that these rulings don't count, but that's not at all what's happening here. These are nothing more than excuses being used to justify losing virtually every single case in the courts, which is precisely where these issues are supposed to be litigated. Even when Raskin pressed the issue and asked Gates for one single case proving fraud, all Gates can do is blame the judicial system for its failures. Not accept the fact that in more than 60 attempts to prove fraud, they couldn't do it even a single time, even at the hands of judges who Donald Trump himself appointed pointed, nah, Gates' solution here is just to claim that the whole system failed. Because when Republicans don't get their way, rather than accept reality, their only move is to stomp their feet and just blindly continue claiming that they're the victims of some untold systemic bias against them. It's either the corrupt judges or the corrupt deep state or the corrupt rhinos, but it's got to be someone else's fault because it certainly isn't ours. Got it. Moving on to Raskin asking Gates why he voted against the January 6th commission, a commission by the way that gave Democrats and Republicans equal power, as misguided as that was, Gates claims that the focus on January 6th is unwarranted, even though January 6th was quite literally the consequence of Trump's big lie. The consequence of these unproven claims of fraud still, somehow, investigating the events of January 6th aren't relevant. And as Jamie Raskin pointed out, that was nothing more than a tepid effort to deflect from the fact that he simply doesn't want to look into it because it exposes corruption on the right. That's all. Occam's razor, the simplest answer here is the right one. Matt Gates knows that shining a spotlight on January 6 not only hurts his political allies, but undermines their principal talking point, one that Gates is still pushing to this day, that somehow an election that was litigated to within an inch of its life is still not valid. Convenient, huh? And of course, the excuse he leans on is that these congressional committees are simply inept and that no congressional committee could ever be useful anyway, which is quite the statement coming from someone in a political party that spent two years and four months investigating Benghazi, meaning that they were content to spend 28 months mired in investigations when four Americans died, but an armed insurrection at the US Capitol where a mob sought to kill elected officials in service of anointing a president who lost the race, the winner? Yeah, why could we possibly want to look into that? So look, deflections and whataboutisms aside, the simple fact is that these Republicans have no reason to continue perpetuating the big lie, and certainly not as some justification to defend the actions that took place on January 6th. This issue was litigated over and over and over again, and even though Republicans like Matt Gates might not like the results, they have no choice but to accept them. To see more videos like this, click the subscribe button right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work, subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. I cover the most important stories each week, and my guest is always one of the top political figures, including Vice President Kamala Harris, Jen Psaki, Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, Nancy Pelosi, Katie Porter, Cory Booker, and so many more. The podcast link is also right here on this screen, so give it a listen and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.